Hi everyone and welcome to the walkthrough video for the Light Lab location here in Engage. We'll go ahead and get started by clicking the Start Session button over on the left. Then we'll go up here to this tab at the top left. Yours probably won't say Labaki, it will probably say the name of the group or organization that you are working with. But regardless of what it's called, this is where all of our custom locations will live that you will be able to access. So on page two, we've got the light lab right here. I will select it by clicking on it with the trigger button under my index finger. Then I'll click on just me because it's only me in this session. And here we go. All right, here we are in the light lab. We are in a nice big glass pyramid. And the first thing that we see is this matching activity that is designed to teach students about the electromagnetic spectrum. We have a poster over here that explains the activity. And the goal is to pick up these tiles and place them in the appropriate locations on the electromagnetic spectrum. So I can pick them up just by grabbing them with the trigger button under my index finger. And then I can use my left thumbstick to walk around and place them in the appropriate spots. Now there is actually a secret reference guide in this location. Under the stairs here, we have this poster that goes over the full electromagnetic spectrum. And so if students find this resource, they can try to remember some of the information from it and then bring it back up to the matching activity. But let's go ahead and knock this thing out. So we have visible light right there in the middle, infrared to the left of it, x-rays is second from the right, microwaves is over here to the left of infrared, Radio is at the far left end. Gamma rays down here at the very end. And then ultraviolet right here to the right of visible light. Now that we've put all the labels in place, we're presented with a table full of objects that we must also place. So let's start with the sun. The sun can actually go in infrared or ultraviolet. I'll put it in ultraviolet for right now. Obviously our microwave will go in the microwave slot. We've got clock radio. Hopefully kids still know what these are. That will put in the radio section. And infrared heater. That'll go in infrared. Some of the slots will be able to take more than one object. So this radio tower will go with our little clock radio right there. As will this TV. TVs actually work using radio signals. Our super cool sunglasses here will help protect us from the ultraviolet radiation coming from the sun. We've got our visible light spectrum right here. Our smartphones actually communicate using waves at the microwave level. We've got this neat little x-ray machine. This bottle of cancer medicine they actually use gamma rays in some cancer medicines and treatments. And then finally, this super cool Labaki neon light that actually does put off some ultraviolet light. And we'll see now that we've matched everything in place, those triangle doors have opened and we can move on in to the rest of the light lab. If we ever want to reset that matching activity and do it again, we can just click this button for 
reset activity. And you'll see all the pieces will go back to their original places. And then if I walk through this door, it will close behind me. Let me just go back through here real quick. And here we are on the other side in our Light Lab location. There are several interactive components here that we'll go over. Going down the stairs this way, we'll start with our prism. So we've got this laser pointer right here that I can actually pick up and move around. And I can turn it on or off with that little button at the end. And if I walk up to my prism right here and place this somewhere in my prism, the laser pointer will snap to a 15 degree angle increment here and will actually show us how that laser beam reflects and refracts within and through the prism. Now to move it again to a new angle, I need to turn it off first and then I can just grab it and move it to another angle, just like that. Let's try another. There we go. If I want to measure these angles, I can actually go grab my protractor tool right here. And I'll carry it over here. If I bring it near the beam, we'll see it actually snaps to the beam and I can measure that angle. So I can see, for example, that this angle is, that's pretty close to 140 degrees. I'd say probably 130, seven or 138 degrees. I can just pick that back up and any new place that I bring this to, it will snap my protractor to that angle. I can turn off protractor snapping if I want and I can do more of just a free form measurement of other things or I can easily just turn that back on. Now, a laser is only a single wavelength of light. If we wanna see the really cool stuff with prisms, we need multiple wavelengths of light, and we can use a flashlight for that. A flashlight has white light, which is composed of all of the different colors of light stacked together. So if I put my flashlight here, we'll see it actually starts to refract into a little rainbow and our different wavelengths of light get spread apart. I can do one more here. And so if you're curious, we actually have a poster that teaches about Snell's law and the math behind the refraction of different angles as they go through air and glass. So we've done one example here, a laser going through the prism offset at 30 degrees from the normal of the face of the prism. We break down the calculations using Snell's law for one of these examples to show how you would calculate the resulting angle. Now, if you really want to, you can use the protractor and calculate some of those other angles. You can actually do that with this whiteboard right here. So I just clicked on that draw button, and now I can walk up to this whiteboard and maybe do some math on the board. I can close out of that just like that. So that is our prism activity. You can easily switch back to the prism instruction poster just by clicking that button right there and that will describe to us the activity and the different things that I can do. Behind this I have one of our two stages in this location so I can be the teacher here and teach a class to my students here and they'll be able to walk up these stairs and sit in a chair and face the screen. And just like any other screen in Engage, I can load media right onto it. 
Let's see what I've got here. This is just a demo video of this very location within Engage. But yeah, I can be up at the front of the classroom on the stage, teaching the material to my students with the video playing behind me. Moving on over here to the middle of the room, we have our wave building tool. This is a pretty fun one. We have this rope along the back and a little measurement tool that goes with the rope. And we will actually use these controls to build a wave. First, we set the amplitude. And then we can set the wavelength. So the amplitude is the intensity of our light and the wavelength is how long or short the distance between the peaks and of the two waves are. And so if I come up to my measurement tools here, I can pick a point that sort of lines up with one of these peaks and each unit is 100 nanometers. So I can count one, two, three, four, 450 maybe nanometers is about how long I would say this particular wave is in terms of wavelength. So as I adjust my wavelength, I get different colors that appear. And I can see that even better if I turn on our pendant lamp here. And so if I click and hold this, I can see that pendant lamp change colors as it goes through the different frequencies. And I can adjust the amplitude, the brightness or the intensity of the light, just by clicking and holding that. And we can see the light get brighter or dimmer around us. Stop our media here. Right behind us, we have the dark room. We can walk up to the dark room and just touch the door to open it. And then I've got all of these interactive, colorful flashlights. So blue, red, green. And you can see, I can actually pick these up and move them around and see how different colors stack on top of each other. And if you're running this location from a PC or a headset connected to your computer, you should be able to actually walk up and uh, even make some shadow puppets with these lights, which is pretty cool. I've got the white light here too, but I can add some additional white light to everything and see how that changes. I can turn all of these off just by touching those buttons. Then over here behind me, I have another white light and some lenses that I can play with. So I can see that lens flare sort of start to appear as I shine my white light through it. And similar to the flashlights over there, if I stack my red and green lenses, I get them pretty much in the exact same place. I should get yellow light. And we see that's pretty close to what I get. I can stack my blue lens. And now I've got all the colors there that should add up to white light. So I'll go ahead and turn off that flashlight and we'll move on to our next demonstration. Over here in the other corner, we have the classic double slit experiment. The double slit experiment, if you remember, was created by Thomas Young and it illustrates how light can behave as both a wave and a particle. So what we can do is right now we have our tool set to the laser beam. And if I turn on that laser beam, I've got my light being aimed at these two slits. 
Normally those slits would be much closer together, but it's a little easier to see like this. And when the light gets split up by these two slits, it actually behaves as two waves that interfere with each other and make this pattern right here. And we can see this over on the screen over here. We can see two waves coming out of two different slits and how in some places they constructively interfere with each other and make stronger regions. And at some places they destructively interfere with each other and make weaker regions that just cancel each other out entirely. And that's this pattern that we're seeing right here. Now, if I turned off my laser, I can cover up one of these slits by just picking up that cover and bringing it up to the panel here. And we'll see now I only get one little area of light right there. Can turn it off, bring our cover back down to the table. Now things start to get really strange when we turn on our light with the two slits open and we plug in our detector. Now this detector has a sensor aiming at the bottom slit and one at the top slit. And if we try to count the number of photons that are coming between each of the slits, by turning on our detector right there, something really strange happens. Light stops behaving as a wave and instead starts behaving as a particle. The probability function, the wave function of that light collapses and light then decides to behave as particles when we try to start observing or measuring its behavior. So then if I unplug our detector, you'll see it'll just go back to its wave behavior. So this is a weird quirk of quantum physics. We can also turn on our particle gun and see that same behavior like we would expect as particles. We'll see it splitting up there into its two groups, just like we were seeing when we had the detector plugged in and we observed light behaving as particles. And similarly, we can cover up one of these slits. We have to turn off our tool first. And there we go, we see just one area of particles coming through. We go through some of the math of the double slit experiment on this poster right here, just in terms of the setup and some of the approximations and assumptions made. We talk about constructive and destructive interference and even pose a problem that the students can work out on this board as well. All right, this concludes our tour of the Light Lab location. I really hope you enjoy teaching about light and physics in this location. It's a great tool to have in your classroom, and I wish you all the best with it. Thank you so much.